Lord, have mercy. Hi, my name is Jeremy. This is Red Beans Recording, and this is part of a series of videos going over my batch of tracks for the YouTube Music Library. These are tracks that you can use in your videos and monetize and royalty free, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's a whole bunch of them. There's not just mine. There's some amazing stuff in there. So um, check the video description for links or information on how to get those tracks for your videos. This video will be going over two soft tracks that are in the uh, in the library that I made out of ten. One uh, which is sort of a chip tune sort of track and the other one which is a piano track. So we're gonna start with the chip tune one. Like I said in a previous video when I was offered the chance to do these, this is the third round of them that I've done. I've gone through a lot of different faces with them, like instruments that I've used and techniques that I've used. And instead of just sitting out on my computer starting to compose, I wanted to do something a little bit different with these. So I looked around my studio and I was like, what can I use that will be inspiring that I haven't touched in a while. And the answer was my uh, my Access Virus up here. It's a Virus Indigo 2. It's an amazing synthesizer. Uh, it sounds absolutely massive and is always inspiring. And I have a whole ton of patches on it that I've made for myself. So that's what happened with this one. It started off on the Virus. Um, I just sat down, picked a patch that I really liked and uh, started playing. I didn't actually have any tempo set when I made that. Um, I just wanted to get the idea down because gosh darn it, that's the hardest thing to do sometimes. And so after I got that done, I eventually brought it over here to um, my production station and um, I had to retime the whole thing. <laughs> so I had the MIDI recorded um, and let me just show you a quick trick about this. So um, this is the MIDI for the virus that I recorded, the virus line. And uh, you can select any amount of MIDI that you have recorded here and grab this handle, this little handle right here, and squish it uh, or elongate it in time. And that was really, really useful to me when I was like um, trying to move sections of this into uh, the tempo that I had uh, finally chosen for this. So I started building up layers. The first thing was I needed to get that sound into something that was going to work as a main patch. So I brought up Serum. Um, I bought a while ago this Chiptunes for Serum um, pack. And uh, this, is, this is this beautiful um, pad thing going on here. I actually have two instances of it. I have uh, them hard panned left and right um, with the MIDI from this one triggering this one, just so I can get a big wide sound out of this thing. Um, then I started to layer. Um, I have a little bass just kicking it down here a very simple chippy tune wave with a uh, nice attack and release to give us a nice thing. It's also from this pack. So then I started adding some little um, filigree. This little ARP thing. You can see that the wavetable is traveling through the position here. The position is being automated. LFO1 is doing that. So that's kind of cool. Another, I think this might be a pad. Yeah, so this is um, also in the chiptune thing. Sounds like almost like a vocal uh, pad. So with those two together, we end up getting this nice. Bed. We bring in another ARP. This is from Plogue Chip Sounds, which has a lot of really cool and classic uh, chips. Like, look at all these chips. So this is a really cool sound from them that's brought in to change the way that that section sounds. And we have a call and response with this Serum ARP here. This is a custom patch with a couple waveforms from Serum. Both of them are stock waveforms. Nothing really crazy going on there. Also brought in a low pad to give some interest to the low ends during this section. I'll go ahead and play the whole thing again. Isn't that cool? 
that's a really cool sound. So that's chip tune as well. Chip sounds, excuse me. So uh, we'll just kind of go through this as we go linearly. Um, I have some little effects, just little effects that I grabbed from the Byte Riot Native Instruments expansion, and they're running through uh, Valhalla's Shimmer, which always gives a gigantic tail end to uh, every reverb that I pass through it. Also, it does some pitch shifting, so you get this cool, really spacey sound out of it. So then we go into, we have, you know, we have this middle section here where it changes. We have a little sort of respite. And we get a lot bigger. So let's talk about this ARP. Again, from the chip tune pack. And it's just another layer of interesting ch stuff on the downbeat of each measure. Later on, with the filter all the way open, it's going all the time. Um, we do bring in some extra drums here. We also bring in another bass because the mix gets a lot bigger, so that initial bass isn't just quite is not quite enough. Um, we bring in the snare. It's actually serum. What you're hearing is a, a noise clunk, a noise attack here on the noise thing, and this um, this wavetable here afterwards. So Serum can do drums too. That goes. In this section, we, it's this thing right here, the Serum thing is uh, a chiptune preset that is echoing what we had up here. It's adding another timbre to it. So that's that's it on its own. And then we add this. Really brightens up the whole thing. Layering is important. So we bring in this noise thing, almost like a synthetic um, drum roll kind of thing. It's really just an air can noise with a flanger on it and some delay. Finally, we have this extra solo here. Very, very classic uh, sort of video game sounding lead with a square wave and a little bit of vibrato. Really, really beautiful. And some high strings, courtesy of chip sounds. Again, that pulse width modulation, just like, it's just beautiful. That, my friends, is the track I call Through the Crystal. We have one more to go over, and uh, yeah, let's jump into the last track. <coughs> All right, this is the last track in the series of videos about the YouTube Music Library. I call this one the hardest part. It sort of um, is inspired by the work in the Donnie Darko soundtrack, um, which was a lot of traditional instruments um, backed up by more synthetic stuff to create cool atmospheres. I started this track on the Access Virus as well, uh, just playing, sat down and played some stuff, and um, this is what I got out of that. So yeah, you can hear it's a little messy, but that wasn't the point. The point wasn't to do it perfectly. The point was to uh, record it, uh, get something down, get an idea down. So I recorded the MIDI you can see here and I had to bring it in and adhere it to a tempo. And I did the same thing where I grabbed a bunch of it and I sort of went like, okay, you're gonna be this long. And then I went in and did a lot of quantization and cleanup of the whole thing. Um, that took a while, but then I was able to use the MIDI to do other stuff. Now, the standouts in this thing are a couple of new things from Native Instruments. Um, the first thing is this piano 
that they came out called Noir. Noir, um, at first blush, is like, looks like just another grand piano thing. Uh, um, and I have the piano double here, so this is going to be the quiet version of it. Um, Noir is really, really interesting. Um, so first of all, you can hear that noise. One of the things that I do when I am using um, sampled pianos is I add ambience. I'll usually add a noise track of some kind just to like sort of fill in the space, especially if it's mostly just piano. But um, Noir has it built in. Um, there are a series of noise things here that you can add to uh, to your thing. I have some 15 um, inches per second tape noise going on here. The other thing that's really cool is this pianist thing. This is the sound of the piano player himself or herself, excuse me. This is the sound of the pianist themselves sort of fidgeting around on the instrument, which adds a really awesome uh, organic sound to the whole thing. So small flex, weird flex, but I really, really love this ambient section here. Where Noir starts getting super interesting, though, is the particles engine. So Noir has the ability to, and God, I think I should do a whole video on this. Uh, let's find out where the amp where this starts coming in, and I'll play for you what it does, so what it sounds like, and then we can figure it out. So this is going to go from pure to then including the particle section. So Noir has a particle engine that will create additional notes, um, either synced or not, this density thing here, as it, obviously you can see the tempo here, um, with different modes to create these clouds of, of notes on different timbres of things here that you can really mess with um, to get this incredible like thing out of, I don't, I don't even know. It's just it's instantly beautiful and cinematic. So the Noir piano is there um, acting as a normal piano uh, sort of to begin with and adding that ambience. And then I bring in the particle cloud here. You can see sort of in and out. I have another instance of Noir that is playing with a different set of particles. This is more of a brushed particle. So you can see over here, tonal brush, and two together. It's like having a whole other instrument play along with you. It's really, really cool. That's all well and good, but I needed something to sort of nail down the foundation of the piano sound. And for that, I reached for the Grandeur by Contact, which is just a beautiful grand piano. So there's our real meat and potatoes right there with Noir, adding the noise on top. I love it. It's really, 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 really pretty. So uh, that's our main piano lines. Then I started adding instances of Straylight. Um, I have four instances of Straylight and one instance of Rev by output. And these are our sort of weird electronic slash organic cinematic elements that are hanging out in the background um, playing odd things. You can see that I'm using the mod wheel here to play the XY thing here. And I'm using the pitch bend a lot in this because I wanted everything to sort of be off kilter and move up and down and fade. And yeah, Straylight is beautiful. Straylight and Noir together. I don't know what else you would really need if you wanted to make a soundtrack. It's astoundingly beautiful. So those are there to support the main line. At the end here, when uh, we introduce this higher element, I introduce an instance of Rev by output, which is a series of reversed affected sounds um, 
In this case, we have this really cool distorted sort of mallet pad thing in reverse, which adds a nice bed to the bottom here. And then coming out of this section, I did do some tempo automation. And bring everything out to let the piano sort of come back to normal and then particles come in a tiny bit up here to sort of to return to where we're going. Same thing at the end here. So that is the hardest part, the final track in our series of videos about my YouTube library tracks. Um, I hope that this was informative or interesting or something. Um, I hope that maybe you find a use for these tracks in your work. If you liked what you saw here and heard here, um, check the links in the description or in the end of the video for uh, information on how to use get these tracks, <coughs> for information on how to get these tracks from the YouTube library. And um, if you'd like to see more videos like this, check the playlists and there'll be more videos like this. Thank you for watching. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording, and I hope you have a wonderful day. <laughs> <laughs>